to the show. Eric Carr became the second drummer of Kiss in 1980. Now, he was a true multi-instrument musician. Eric also played guitar, bass, piano, and even sang background vocals. But in his 11 years with Kiss, it was his double bass drumming and the painted makeup he designed himself for that Fox persona that added to the band's exciting visual experience while also giving them a heavier hard rock sound. Eric was a powerful and hard-hitting drummer who was influenced heavily by John Bonham. But above all, he became a fan favorite due to his approachable and friendly nature with audiences both on stage and off. We are so proud to honor Eric, whose presence is missed. Hey everyone, it's Jeff Scott Soto here, 2019 Metal Hall of Fame inductee. It is my privilege and my honor to welcome to the club someone who absolutely deserves it. 2021 Metal Hall of Fame inductee, the Fox himself, Mr. Eric Carr. Eric brought an arsenal of dynamic and dimension to KISS. It was one of my favorite eras of KISS personally, and he belongs here with so many other amazing artists who left incredible contributions to the art of hard rock, heavy metal, and rock and roll music. So welcome, Eric Carr. Hey, this is Charlie from the band Anthrax, and uh, I think it's awesome that you are inducting Eric Carr into the Metal Hall of Fame. Uh, Eric was such a, a great person, an awesome drummer, and I'm glad I got to know him. Um, I saw Eric's first show with Kiss in New York City at the Palladium, and I was so excited because I thought um, Eric brought power to Kiss. I was pretty bummed out when, when Peter Chris left the band and, uh, you know, didn't know what to expect. And then once I saw Eric, I saw the kid he was playing, this big Ludwig Octoplus kid, and it was just awesome. I fell in love with it right away. Um, so when he did the record Creatures of the Night, uh, the drum sound on that record, I thought, was so powerful and Eric's playing on that record is just so powerful and I just thought he was perfect for Kiss. Um, when we got to tour with them, uh, we would hang with Eric quite a bit. He would come in the dressing room. I would see him, you know, hanging and we would just talk and he was, like I said, just a nice warm person, just real genuine and uh, he's missed. Uh, last time I saw Eric, uh, was on a tour we did, um, the Clash of the Titans, and we played Madison Square Garden. And Eric was backstage, and that was the last time I saw him. And uh, yeah, he's missed quite a bit, uh, not only just for being uh, just an awesome person, but for his talent. Um, so congratulations, Eric. Metal all the way. Hey everybody, Bobby Rock here. So happy to be part of the celebration tonight. You know, if you ever wanted to understand how much a drummer could single-handedly influence an overall band sound, go back and listen to Eric Carr's playing on Creatures of the Night. And then understand that this was 1982. Like, we had just never heard this kind of shit before, man. I mean, the, the huge groove, those massive sounding drums, I mean, he sounded like, you know, John Bonham playing at the Grand Canyon, man. I mean, this was really epic, redefining drum sounds uh, and production for really the next decade ahead. And this was before, you know, Pyromania, before Shout of the Devil, before Metal Health or some of the other really influential records uh, drum sound wise. So Eric was really ahead of the curve in that department. And then you go see him live with Kiss. And I think he brought a whole different level of elevation to the band, to the music, you know, his musicianship, his R&B background, I think gave him this, what we call back in the pocket kind of feel. Uh, his drum solo was of course, always a highlight of the show. There was again, great musicality there. He had an almost uh, structural approach, uh, almost like a song, how he would uh, approach his drum solo with the chops and the technique and the showmanship the integration of electronics a bit later into the solo. And with all of that, he's left us quite a legacy, musically speaking, with all of his records and all those performances. But another legacy that we could all probably agree on here is just his legacy of how he treated people. And this is what I always heard about uh, through the years with regard to Eric. 
And finally, summer of 91, we had a chance to sit down and powwow for a bit. Eric and Carrie came out to Radio City in New York where I was playing with Nelson. And we had a chance to talk finally. And, you know, obviously he was in the middle of a fight at that time. And I saw a tremendous strength in character, strength in spirit. I saw a gentleness about him and a kindness. And I really was able to get what it was that I'd always heard about him. And I think this is a legacy, you know, in terms of how he treated other people that will live on with at least as much importance as uh, the great music and art that he's left behind for us here. So to all of Eric's friends and family and loved ones and fans, just want to offer a heartfelt congratulations tonight. And I appreciate you guys including me in the celebration. Catch you guys out there. I'm Carrie Stevens. The last time I recited a speech for Eric Carr was at his memorial service in 1991. Never in a million years did that college girl who met Eric after a KISS concert in 1987 think she'd be in his place accepting his Heavy Metal Hall of Fame award 30 years after his passing. Since then, I've been no stranger to giving interviews about him. Each time I fought anxiety, searching for the perfect words, struggling, but my determination to keep his memory alive took over. Therefore, it is a great honor to be a part of his induction. So much has changed in 30 years. I've grown, I've found my voice. Well, not my singing voice. <laughs> Eric always told me that I had the worst singing voice he'd ever heard, but rather my strength. It's easy for me to talk about myself, to be vulnerable, to admit my flaws. But speaking for Eric is entirely different. It makes me want to be perfect because he was perfect. So I prayed for a whispering angel and I asked Eric and his spirit guides what to say and this is the message that I received. Life is fragile. It's complicated, meaningful and beautiful. Listen to the song lyrics. The theme is usually, love doesn't make sense. Life is unfair, but more songs have been written about love than anything else because love never dies. Long after the greats are gone, their music lives on. Eric Carr was one of the greats. He would have accepted this award with humility and humor. I hope I've done him justice. He will be in our hearts forever. The thunder from his drums will transcend space and time. I am so proud. This trophy belongs to you, Eric Carr. Thank you to the fans, to the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. Long live the Fox. Hi, my name is Sarah Jean Barkey and I am here to accept the um, induction for my uncle Eric Carr to the Metal Hall of Fame. I am beyond honored, my family and I are beyond honored to be able to do this for him. Um, he, even though I didn't know him for very long, he is a huge part of my life. I see the influence he has on musicians everywhere. Um, he really was one of a kind. And I am so happy that I got to know him for even just a little bit. I was five um, when I went to one of his concerts and I will <laughs> never forget how much fun it was being backstage, being with the loud music and the lights. It was just, I, nothing can really replace that. Um, and I'll have that memory forever. So thank you again for letting me be here to do this for him. Rock and Roll All Night brings you interviews, reviews, concerts, music, and more. So for more Rock and Roll All Night content, click subscribe.